With the introduction of the new asset pipeline, there are a lot of new tools available for you to use. So the question is, how to install Bootstrap in Rails 7? By the end of this video, you'll know two ways in which you can install Bootstrap and how to fix a problem with the installer. When I first tried to install Bootstrap in one of my projects, I was surprised that the installer didn't actually work as expected. And it's not like I had any custom configurations or anything, it's the same even if you start a project from scratch, as I'll show you in just a minute. But let's start from the beginning. As I mentioned, there are two ways you can go about installing Bootstrap in your Rails 7 application. The first one is to use the Rails new command to generate a new project with Bootstrap pre-installed. And if you want to do that, you can just use the dash j es build dash dash css bootstrap flags and you're done. And this approach works perfectly out of the box. But if your project was started with import maps and you want to migrate to Bootstrap and the JavaScript bundler, well, it's not that straightforward. And before I tell you why that is and how to make it all work, I want to let you know there's a shortcut to learning everything about Rails 7, including how the new asset pipeline works, Hotwire, and everything else about Rails. So if you're a beginner looking to level up your Rails skills, check out my Practical Ruby on Rails for Beginners course. I'll put a link in the description if you want to learn more. So let's go back to installing Bootstrap into an existing import maps based project, which is the default way to start a new project in Rails 7. The first thing you'll need to do is to install the CSS bundling Rails gem and then use the installer that the gem provides to generate the necessary configuration. So let's take a quick look at what the installer does. It creates a builds folder and links it in the manifest file. It removes the application.css file because it generates its own. It adds a package.json file to store JavaScript dependencies. It installs the foreman gem and it generates a config file for it. It adds a bin dev script to start your Rails server and watch for any changes to your CSS files. It creates the bootstrap specific SCSS file which will be bundled into an application.css file. It installs all the JavaScript dependencies listed in the package.json file. It depends the bootstrap pawn path to the assets paths. It adds the bootstrap JavaScript import to the application.js file. And finally, it configures the build CSS command and runs it to build the application.css file. So if we try to use a bootstrap component, like the navbar, you'll see it looks pretty good. But there's a problem. The dropdowns don't work. And that's because we don't have the JavaScript bundling set up. So let's install the JS bundling Rails gem and add the ES build bundler by running the installer that the JS bundling Rails gem provides. We'll get back to fixing these errors in a minute, but first, let's take a quick look at what the installer does. As you can see, it checks for a builds folder, but because we already have it, it doesn't do anything. Then it adds the JavaScript include tag to the application layout file. It adds a task in the form and config file to watch for any JavaScript changes. It installs the ES build bundler and it tries to build the JavaScript code. And that's where it gets into trouble. Because we have some code left over from import maps which conflicts with how the JS bundling Rails gem works. So let's fix these problems. The first thing I'll do is I'll install Turbo Rails and Stimulus. Then I'll adjust the import path in the application.js file and I'll remove the old stimulus imports. In the application layout file, I'll remove the JavaScript import map tags helper since it's no longer required. And finally, I'll unlink the other JavaScript folders, leaving just the builds folder and the images folder in the manifest. So now, if we take a look at the navbar in the browser, you'll see it looks the same, but this time the dropdowns do work. If you want to learn more about how the asset pipeline works, you can check out this video where I share an overview of the different tools that the new asset pipeline provides.